so dear students in this lecture we will discuss about the pole placement technique pole placement technique is basically used uh, in modern control systems uh, under the concept of state variable feedback in this lecture we will cover the introduction to the pole placement technique and then we will see how to uh, design a compensator using pole placement technique so uh, pole placement technique is also known as so in pole placement technique our uh, you know approach is that we uh, assume that all the state variables are measurable and they are available for the feedback that means we can easily feedback them now if the system considered on which means we are working uh, if that system is completely state controllable means it is completely controllable okay so uh, in that case uh, the poles of the closed loop system they uh, can be placed at any desired location okay so the, the the method the methodology which is used to place the poles uh, to the desired location is based on the uh, state feedback uh, theory and in which we uh, intend to uh, obtain a state feedback gain matrix such that the uh, purpose is uh, fulfilled now in this technique basically in pole placement technique uh, we begin with uh, determining the uh, desired closed loop poles uh, and their location uh, based on the transient response and frequency response of the system that means first we decide that what should be the desired performance of the system and whether we want uh, an under damped response or over damped response or critically damped response uh, based on that uh, you know uh, criteria we uh, decide the location of the uh, closed loop poles of the given system using pole placement technique now how to design the compensators or control systems using pole placement technique the first thing that we do while um, designing the control system using pole placement technique is that we select the desired closed loop poles we assume that uh, the poles uh, let us say uh, the pole is uh, located at some s is equal to mu 1 then s is equal to mu 2 or some s is equal to mu n <clears throat> like right so uh, we assume that the, these poles uh, are the desired closed loop poles and they would be placed on the desired location so as to achieve the desired performance okay after that we uh, select uh, the appropriate gain matrix for the state feedback okay uh, basically we uh, uh, decide a control law which is based on the uh, state feedback gain matrix and the state of the system and our purpose is to select that gain matrix in such a way that uh, the poles of the closed loop system means the desired poles of the closed loop system could be placed at the desired location however there is a condition for that and that condition is uh, that the system the original system dynamic system must be completely controllable or you can say it must be completely state controllable then uh, basically uh, conventionally uh, we design the controllers uh, such that uh, we can get the desired performance from the system 
Now, however, that desired performance is based on two factors, two very important factors, which are the damping ratio and the natural frequency. These two factors play a very important role in deciding the nature of the response of the system, whether the response would be under damped, over damped, critically damped, undamped, right? A natural frequency also play, um, as it is said, it also it is also one of the factors along with the damping ratio, which play uh, an important role. Okay, it basically, uh, you know, is responsible for the oscillatory nature of the system. So let us understand how to, uh, you know, design a compensator is how to obtain that state feedback gain matrix uh, using pole placement technique. See, we will start with assumption that our desired closed loop poles are these which will give us the desired closed loop performance. Okay, so these poles will give a desired performance. Okay, now let us understand this thing okay now let us consider consider a system lti as expressed by the following state equation. So that state equation is x dot t is equal to a x t plus b u t. This is let us equation number one. In this equation, xt is the state vector, ut is the input vector, basically it deals with the control signal. Then your a and b are the state matrix and input matrix respectively. Right? So now, once we have expressed a linear time invariant dynamic system with the state space uh, equation, so um, then our purpose become to obtain the uh, controller's gain or state feedback gain matrix in such a way that uh, this system's poles or this system yields the desired performance, right? However, this system shall be completely controllable, okay? The system. given by equation one must be completely state controllable, right? Now, if we have to draw the block diagram of this particular equation, x dot t, is equal to a x t plus b u t. Now, if we have to draw the state a block diagram, so first of all we will take an integrator. So the input to this integrator is the dynamics, which is the derivative term, and the output is x t. 
a part of this is basically fed back to the uh, it is multiplied here and then uh, there are two components which are added so let us take some control signal ut which is multiplied with a matrix b and then both are added so these both are added here so this is the uh, diagramic representation of the equation number one now the control signal uh, is selected based on the state feedback gain matrix so that means we will uh, decide a u which is based on the uh, this is the state feedback gain matrix and this is the uh, state vector right this is lattice equation number 2 so that means to get the control signal uh, so that we can get the desired performance it we have to obtain k in such a way that we can get such control signal now so if we substitute equation 2 in equation 1 so we have x dot t is equal to a x t plus b minus k x t now we can simplify this equation or x dot t is equal to a x t plus minus b k x t so this will give me a minus b k x t so this is x dot t now this is let us equation number 3 now in this equation 3 a minus b k is the matrix which uh has the eigen values and these eigen values are actually the desire close loop poles now the uh the block diagram representation of equation 3 is now what will be the block diagram representation of equation 3 so this will be first of all we will take an integrator here input to the integrator is the derivative term and output is the state a part of this is multiplied with a matrix state matrix a and fed back here then you have a control signal ut which is multiplied with the matrix b which is input matrix and these two are added here right now our purpose in pole placement technique is to have 
a compensator which we are actually calling as state feedback gain matrix and we will feedback this one so this is yielding us x dot t is equal to a minus b k x t right so here u t is equal to minus k x t and u t is basically the control signal hence control signal is depending upon the state feedback gain matrix and the instantaneous state xt of the given system so the control signal will force the system to yield the desired performance that means this control signal which is actually based on k and xt will force will give us the desired location of the closed loop poles right hence the objective is to obtain state feedback gain matrix k okay. so this is the objective k is uh, actually the compensator or control right now the solution of the uh, equation 3 is now how will we get the solution here so x dot t is equal to a minus b k x t okay so this is uh, we'll take the laplace of this one x t so it will give me x s and so we'll take the inverse laplace so it will give me s x s minus x zero sorry so we'll take the inverse laplace of this one uh, of the x s so it will give us x t means this is the solution of the given state space model right now the solution is xt is equal to e this a minus b k t 
into x to zero. So this is the solution of this equation. This is let us equation number four. X zero, it is the initial state of the system. So question here is. Uh, decide the desired closed loop poles and second is obtain k such that these poles can be placed at desired location right so this is the conclusion of this is the crux of this particular topic um, this particular technique pole placement i hope it is clear to you okay so uh, in next uh, video we will discuss about the uh, 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 the design of state observers basically full order state observers uh, using state feedback uh, concept however there is a necessary condition basically in pole placement technique and necessary condition we have already discussed and it is that uh, i'll write it here for your reference so necessary condition Necessary and sufficient condition. Okay. Completely your system, original system is, shall be, must be completely state controllable. Right? it shall be completely state controllable. This is the necessary and sufficient condition, right? So this was about today's lecture, guys. Thank you so much.